Hello? Well, hello. I hope you're having a great day. I have just been over here growing out and admiring my natural nails. Today I'm gonna go over how I went from this to this to this and share some tips on how I, someone who regularly puts her nails through it by trying out different products, goes about growing out healthy natural nails while I give myself a manicure. Before I start, I wanna make it clear that the tips I'm about to share are how I, me, Irina, how I grow long healthy nails as a gel wearer. If you only wear regular nail polish and live a soft life where you don't use your hands a lot, this video will not be very useful for you. If you are like me and use your hands a lot, you enjoy trying out nail products and switch up your look very often, but you still wanna try and grow out your natural nails, then this video is for you. Also keep in mind that what works for me may not work for you, but also it could, whether you implement one or all of the things that I do into your routine, I hope that you find this video helpful. Some people have a tough time just like growing out their nails, period. And if that sounds like you, it may be something that you need to sort out internally. I definitely believe that my diet, supplementation regimen, and lifestyle choices greatly contribute to my nails growing like crazy, but we're not gonna get into that today because I am not opening up that can of worms. If you're impatient and you just wanna get to the meat of the video, here are my tips in point form. Keep your nails and cuticles hydrated. Hydrated nails are harder to break. Moisturized cuticles are happy cuticles. It seems like a no-brainer, like duh, I gotta moisturize my hands, but honestly, you'd be surprised. Even if you use your hands a lot, whether it be at your job or around the house, try to minimize how much you use your nails to do stuff. For example, don't open up pop cans with your nails. Use the soft part of your finger or a spoon. Don't directly press buttons using the tip of your nail. Use your knuckle. Basically handle things as if you were walking around with wet nails is the best way that I can describe it. Anytime I break a nail, it's 100% self-inflicted and could have been easily avoided. And this one took me a while to do myself, but wear rubber gloves when you wash dishes. I rarely use the dishwasher. I wash everything by hand. It's just how I was raised. And wearing gloves has been a game changer because I have this annoying habit of washing my hands after literally everything that I do. So minimizing the amount of contact that my nails have with water is really important. Implement a peel off base coat into your routine if you like to switch up your nail look often. And we'll go over this more in depth later on in the video. Wear gel nail polish or gel products. Again, going over this more in depth later on. And this is a very important one. Make perfecting the removal process process a priority as it can make or break your nail growth journey. Treat your nails with care and take your time when removing anything. I've had this set on for about two and a half weeks. And as you can see, I got quite a bit of growth during that time and my nails are nice and strong. So we're kind of working backwards today because I have to remove my current set and start over. The first thing I do when I'm removing anything is I file off as much of the product on the surface of my nails that I'm comfortable with using an e-file. You don't have to use an e-file for this. A hand file will do just fine. It's just gonna take you a little bit longer to do it, but that's okay, don't rush. It. The bit that I'm using here is the Typhoon Fine Bit by Kiara Sky. Now, I wouldn't normally use this if I only had on a couple coats of gel polish. I would probably use a sanding band or a ceramic safety bit. I know that I have several layers of gel to get through, so I know it's going to take me a while to reach my natural nail plate. If you're a beginner, I wouldn't recommend using this. Just stick to a ceramic safety bit or even a sanding band. When I'm filing through the layers of gel product, I don't file all the way down to my natural nail because I don't want to accidentally damage my nail plate. So I stop when I start to see the base layer. Once you do this a few times, you become familiar with what your natural nail looks like versus what it looks like with a layer or two of gel. I don't apply too much pressure when I'm using an e-file because I don't want it to get stuck in one spot and burn me. If you feel a burning sensation at all while using an e-file, move faster and apply less pressure. Filing not only gets really messy, 
but it can easily be inhaled, which is not something that you want. So invest in a dust collector if you can, or do this step in a well-ventilated area or outside. I've gotten tired of cutting up my own aluminum foil, so I've been using these pre-made aluminum nail wraps, which have little cotton pads built into them. They may not look like much, but they're such a game changer. You get 250 pieces in this box, so it should last you about 25 sets. I've been using them on my toes as well, which has been amazing. There's nothing I hate more than one, doing my pedicure, and two, removing gel product from my toes. Oh my god, I'm sweating just thinking about it. Before applying your acetone soaked nail wraps, you want to apply some balm, salve, or cuticle oil to the skin around your nails to offset the harshness of the acetone, which tends to dehydrate the absolute shit out of your cuticles. I alternate between these four. They all work great. If your hands are naturally on the drier side, which mine are because I wash my hands a lot, I'd recommend using Aquaphor or the Honey Lemon Salve that I have. If you don't think you need something as thick, a cuticle oil will do. These ones are just my favorites at the moment. Now when I apply my balm, I do not play around. I am basting those cuticles like individual little roasted chickens. I have to, otherwise I'll end up with Crypt Keeper hands. It's a constant battle in my life. Next I'm taking pure acetone and I'm soaking the little cotton pads on my nail wraps, wrapping them tight and leaving them to soak for about 10 minutes. I put my acetone in a little dropper bottle like this each time I need to use it because it makes application less messy, but I wouldn't recommend leaving it in a dropper bottle like this if you're not using it because it will evaporate. I think acetone needs to be kept in a frosted bottle so it doesn't evaporate, something I learned the hard way. I'm just here to tell you the shit that went wrong for me so you don't make the same mistakes. Okay, so we've let the little chickens soak for 10 minutes. Now it's time to remove the nail wraps. One by one, I'm removing them, and whatever gel you have left on your nails should be looking something like this. Scraping it off should be almost effortless. If it's not, scrape off whatever you can and soak again until you get it off completely. Sometimes I have stubborn little bits left over, so I'll re-soak whatever I need until the gel's disintegrated completely. When the gel's off completely, I like to lightly buff the surface of my nails with a buffing block to smooth out unevenness and get any residual gel off, usually on the sides of my nails. Then I clean off the dust with a little bit of alcohol on a lint-free wipe. I always use 70% alcohol. 90% is just too drying on the skin. I get that question a lot. I almost exclusively use 70% for everything, whether it be as a slip solution when I'm applying poly gel or disinfecting my tools and makeup brushes. The reason why 70 is better than 90 is because it contains more water, which allows it to evaporate more slowly. It sits for longer, which in turn does a better job at killing bacteria. The higher the concentration, the more the disinfecting power drops. Just a fun little fact for you. I told you in my last video that I've been taking a more gentle approach to cuticle work. I think it's really made a difference. Today I'll be using the Blue Cross cuticle remover to soften up the skin around my nails. I don't know what sorcery is in this stuff, but it literally melts away even the most stubborn little bits of dead skin. It's very fluid and runny, so I keep it in a dropper bottle. A little bit goes a long way, so it should last me until the end of time. I let it sit for a few minutes, and then I scrape off any dead skin using a wood nail stick. I find using a wood stick for this is much more gentle. Then I switch over to a proper cuticle pusher to actually push the cuticles back, and then I wipe the nails with alcohol again, and then I trim off dead hangy skin with my cuticle nippers.
I've been using this new pair of cuticle nippers for a few months now and I haven't reached for my old ones since I started using these ones. I don't know what it is about these. They're just as sharp as my old ones, but I have less of a tendency to accidentally hurt myself with them. Like I've not hurt myself once since purchasing them. Another cool tool I want to share with you is this glass cuticle pusher. This is really nice to have for those hard to reach areas right up against your cuticle, on the sides, or even under the nail. I kept getting this recommended to me on Amazon, so I finally purchased it. It buffs right up against the cuticle area, which will allow your gel products to adhere better and prevent lifting around the cuticle. It's an alternative way to buff the cuticle area without using an e-file and a cuticle bit. After using any kind of cuticle remover, solution you want to properly cleanse your nail to remove any leftover oil or residue. I highly recommend the CND nail surface cleanser for this. Next I'm applying the gelish pH bond which is a dehydrator followed by the gelish acid free primer. This next step is optional. It really depends on how often you switch out your nail look, but if you do like to change your look often and you're a beginner and you aren't comfortable with the removal process, I recommend trying a peel off base coat as it will make removal a bit easier. Through trial and error, I have come to the conclusion that the Madame Glam peel off base coat works best under nail extensions only. So when I'm applying a full cover tip on top of my natural nail is when I would reach for this. I would not recommend using it under under gel polish alone. For some reason, it's just really stubborn under gel polish. It's very hard to remove, but it pops right off with some warm soapy water when it's under nail extensions. I don't know why, but that is just what it is. What I would recommend under gel polish is the ASP peel off base coat, which unlike the Madame Glam one does not require curing. You just apply it, you let it get tacky, and then you apply your base coat over top. I am using my gelish foundation as a base today as usual and before I flash cure I place a nail rod under my nail to straighten out the edges because as my nails grow longer they tend to curl inward on the sides so using a nail rod helps me to cure the sides in place and prevent them from curling inward and once I flash cure each nail I give all of the nails a full cure in my LED lamp for 45 seconds. We are revisiting my tip from the beginning of the video. If you're having trouble growing out your natural nails because you just can't help but break them for whatever reason, I would suggest giving gel polish a try. In my experience, gel products, especially when layered, provide much more protection to the nails than regular nail polish. I feel like I'm going to say this until I go blue in the face. Gel just gives the natural nails strength that regular nail polish can't. If I were to apply regular nail polish to my nails right now as long as they are, Yes, they would look fine for a little bit, but as soon as I get to using my hands as I normally do, be it doing things around the house or putting on a tight pair of pants, my nails would bend forward or backward and eventually create little cracks down the middle, start snagging on things, and eventually break. I mean, this has been the story of my life before using gel polish, so I know what's gonna happen, and that is why I really like gel. I've heard some people say that gel made their nails weaker, but that could likely be because they weren't removing it properly. If you don't take your time during the removal process and you get impatient and you rush it or you rip off the gel before it's fully soaked off, you'll end up stripping layers off of your nail plate. 
which will result in thin, weak nails. And I'm speaking from experience. When I first started dabbling in gel polish, I was very impatient with the removal process. And sometimes I wouldn't wait for it to soak completely before like going in and ripping it off. And guess what? I ended up with thin, weak nails. As my nails get longer, I always like to apply a coat of my Gelish Structure Gel after my foundation for extra strength. I cure the Structure Gel in my LED lamp for 45 seconds. I wipe off the sticky layer with some alcohol and then I move on to shaping my nails. My next tip would be to make sure you have your base products on first before you move on to filing and shaping your nails. I like to use gentle nail files when shaping. I usually go for a 180 or a 240 grit file. I like my natural nails to have a bit of strength and structure before I file and shape them. Having my base products on gives me a better idea of what I'm working with and it gives me a better end result. Before doing this, I would sometimes over file my nails and once it was time to apply base products and gel polish the layers of gel would kind of take over my shape and I'd be left with something completely different than what I was aiming for. I do try to file my nails in one direction. I know that a lot of people say you shouldn't go back and forth but sometimes I get a little excited and I lose control and as you can see having those base products on my nails prior to shaping gives them the strength they need so that they don't bend while I'm filing them. Shaping is complete, my nails are looking good, now I'm going to move on to gel polish application. I shared this polish bottle holder on Instagram, Chris and I had a good laugh when I opened it for the first time because we um, are clearly still 16 years old at heart, but you can suction it to your desk and secure your bottle in it and it not only prevents you from say spilling your bottle but it comes in handy when you're like halfway through a bottle of something and you don't want to constantly pick it up and tilt it forward to get to the bottom of the product it just stays tilted so the product is easy to reach just a fun little find on amazon anyway i'm starting by applying a thin coat of the in hype gel polish in the shade barely there number 51. this is just meant to even out the tone of my natural nails so whatever i put on top looks uniform and you probably already know this but when working with gel polish thin even coats is the way to go I'm also curing that in my LED lamp for 45 seconds This next shade is gorgeous. Another gel polish by InHype in the shade Cold White. I really hope this is in stock when I post my video. You guys basically sold out their elastic base and delicate pink on Amazon after I posted my last video. This is the perfect cool toned white shade. To me, this is what I wanted OPI Funny Bunny to be. Don't get me wrong, I still love Funny Bunny. It's a classic, but Cold White by InHype is giving it a run for its money. It applies beautifully, streak free. It looks amazing with just one coat. It gives the nails that perfect milky look that we're always aiming for. I applied a second coat just to make it pop a little bit more and I cured each coat in my LED lamp for 45 seconds.
I could have ended it here and just finished off with a top coat, but I was sent these gorgeous shimmery solid gel polishes from Vetsy. And I've been wanting to play with them for a while, so let me first swatch them for you using the brush that they came with. I believe this is called the Aurora set, and it comes with shade number 19, Sugar High. Number 21, Spaced. And number 20, Neon Moon. These can be built up and worn alone, like over a clear nail, they would look really pretty, but I think the best use for them is as toppers. The camera does not pick up just how beautiful and multi-dimensional these are in person, but you kind of get the gist. I'll be using number 20 Neon Moon as a topper because it has a cool toned look to it, which I think will look great over cool white. So I'm just applying a thin layer of it and curing it in my LED lamp for 45 seconds. Even though I've applied quite a few layers of gel products, my nails still don't look thick because I've applied very thin coats. It's important to apply thin coats not only so that your nails don't look chunky, but I find that working with thinner coats makes the gel polish actually adhere to the nail a lot better and you get a lot less lifting. Lastly, I am applying a generous coat of the In Hype Rubber Top. I like using a rubber top coat over any kind of glitter. And when you're applying your top coat, you wanna make sure to cap your free edges to further prevent lifting. I finished off with a little bit of cuticle oil, but for some reason it's not in this video because the clip is gone. I don't know where the hell it went. Every room in this house has a cuticle oil or some kind of balm or salve. If your cuticles and nails are hydrated, I don't know why, but they just are less prone to breaking, so try to keep them hydrated. If there are any other tips that I can think of, I'll put them in the description box, but this is literally what I do. This is what I have done to get my nails to the length that they are. I kind of miss playing around with like gel extensions and things like that, and there are some products that I want to try for future videos, so I might just uh, cut them eventually. I did have one get completely snapped off in a drawer, which was fun. Like I completely broke it off. Luckily, I was able to keep it, and I glued it back together. Anyway, I am in rambling territory territory now, so I'm going to end it here. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. As always, everything that I used will be listed in the description box below. Thank you guys so much for patiently waiting for another video, subscribing, staying subscribed, and I'll see you in my next one. Okay, love you, bye!